Episode 2, 5 to 1, WWE Superstars. If you hear Brock Lesnar su- suplex a tree in the forest, are you going to hear a sound? Yes, that is Mother Nature saying, oh crap, this guy is like the strongest of all time. <laughs> Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Hello and welcome to episode 2 of 5 to 1, the best list podcast out there featuring experts of any topic you can think of. Today we are featuring the best 5 WWE or WWF superstars of all time. The premise of this show is pretty simple. Each week we will have a new topic and run down our list of the 5 best of that subject from 5 to 1. For today's episode, your panel of hosts is comprised of 3 rad wrestling experts. My name is Cactus Jack Chris, and I'm joined by my two sons, Jericho Jet. Want to say hi, Jericho Jet? What's up? And Coco B. Cade. What's up? You guys know who Coco Beware is? No. No. Oh, man. I thought you were the expert, Jet. Come on, man. Coco B. Coco Beware. Coco Puffs. Jet, as the resident WWE super fan and expert, why don't you start us off today? Why did we choose WWE superstars for this episode? Um, I'm not really sure. It's just something I love. Maybe Dad Dad loves to do it. I don't think Cade really enjoys it that much, but we're going to do it anyways because we're 5 to 1. We are 5 to 1. I, I think this, uh, you know, not every episode we do is going to have something that we are all obsessed with, but this topic fits our show perfectly. Uh, we all identify with different certain personalities in different ways, and it should make this conversation interesting. I'm really looking forward to hearing your list. All right, you guys ready? Are we going to go the same order as last time? Yeah, let's go the other way. You, me, me you, you want me to go first yeah. this time? We'll switch it up every time. Okay, save the best for the last, so. You guys know who my number five is yet? Bret Hart. You're right. Bret Hart is absolutely correct. I picked Bret Hart for my number five, and, and here's why. I think um, WWE wrestling can be divided into like three or four different eras of wrestling. We'll say four different, okay? You had the old school kind of classics, the guys who made WWE what it became as a pop cultural phenomenon. Then you had an era of wrestlers kind of who took over for those superstars. And then you had what was called the Attitude Era. And then you have what's going on now. I know what I know what you're talking about. Okay, well, it's in a game I I played that's WWE. Yeah, so there was that period in between, you know, the '80s when when WWF was getting popular, and then the Attitude Era. The per- the period in between was really dominated by two wrestlers, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and they were rivals. And I had to have one of them on my list, and I picked Bret Hart because I knew him better than Shawn Michaels. But um, I also picked him because. He kind of is the reason the Attitude Era started. Have you ever heard of the Montreal Screwjob? No. Have you heard of the Montreal Screwjob, Cade? No. Okay. You know, Bret Hart's from Canada, right? Yeah. Montreal is a city in Canada. There was a big event. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe SummerSlam or something like that. Where Bret Hart was... Um, he had a title match against Shawn Michaels, his rival. And Bret Hart was supposed to retain his title based on the agreement he made with Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels, and then he was go- he had signed a contract with WCW, and he was going to go wrestle there. Well, Vince McMahon didn't want him to leave WWF keeping the title, so he, se- he made a secret agreement without Bret Hart knowing with Shawn Michaels and the referee. And that, uh, you know what I'm talking about now? Yeah, yeah, but the I know what happened in that match. So what? It was a heated rivalry, right? So both of them hit their own finishers. It was going crazy. It, it was like a bowling rivalry. So Shawn Michaels hit the sharpshooter on Bret Hart. The referee, he he just rang the bell. Bret Hart never tapped. I saw it. That's right. That's he what happened. And Bret Hart didn't know that was going to happen before the match. You know how these things they usually know it's going to happen. Bret Hart hadn't agreed to that, and he left really upset with Vince McMahon and with the WWE. And it, it, it started a trend where Vince McMahon had a new personality as the bad guy, as an authority figure who controlled all these actions, and they really made his character that. And because of that, you had guys come in like Stone Cold 
and The Rock and other guys that were against the authority, and that's why they were called the Attitude Era. And so it's really because of Bret Hart and the way he left that the Attitude Era even happened at all. Well, um, Dad's Shawn Michaels has beat him another time, but I'm just saying it was fair and square. He's beat him another time. He sweeps and uses Camels one, two, three. I bet you they've had lots of matches, and you don't know all of them. Yeah, it's it's tied two to two. They both beat each other two times. I still love Bret Hart, but he is not on my list. So, Jet, do you? I know you like Shawn Michaels better than Bret Hart, but do you think Bret Hart had a better career? No. More popular? No, because Shawn Michaels was in the WWE for 25 years. That's a really tough question. They're both extremely popular and icons within WWE, WWF. When I looked up some list of top WWE wrestlers of all time, both of them were always in the top 10 or the top 5. Um, it's a tough call. Between the two of them, I like Bret Hart better. Maybe if I'd watched Shawn Michaels more, I would like him better. I don't know. But because of who I've seen and my experiences, I pick Bret Hart. All right. Okay, your turn. My number five is Batista. Batista because, well, he's just big and strong, and that's the only right reason I really like him. I like his finisher, too. Is that it? You're not going to describe him why? Any tough victories? Well, he, well, he kind of manhandled John Cena one time, which was pretty cool. What is his finisher? A Batista bomb, like a power bomb thingy. I don't know much about Batista either, except that um, he, he he does look really strong. And he's, he does movies outside of his WWE career. Wasn't he in um, Guardians of the Galaxy? I think it was like the Groot thingy. No, Groot was Vin Diesel. He was like the red skin guy that was jacked. He was, uh, he was Drac. Yeah. Groot is the tree. Oh, okay. All right. So, Batista's not on my list because, as, as you think about it, Batista had an amazing career, okay? He, he, he almost beat Shawn Michaels. Like, he, he was a part of Evolution. He, everything was going great. It's just what really got me on, uh, why he's not on my list is because it's how he retired. Like, Triple H... Like, he wanted a match with Dana Bryan, but Dana Bryan had an injury. Like, he can't just face somebody that is hurt. And so, because of that, he just quit. I don't feel like that's right. So, as you can tell from our early conversation, Jet is kind of the expert on WWE. He has a lot more knowledge than Cade and I have. Um, I don't really have much of an opinion of Batista, except that he looks cool. Um, kind of like Cade said. But that's all I can really say about him. I haven't seen many matches of him, but when I watched him, he's enjoyable wrestler he's not the guy you know that will just do punches and punches he'll do different types of moves and stuff so. well i know that vince mcmahon loves the big guys and he gives them big contracts ryback is another example of that um i think batista probably has a, a better career than ryback but that's you know i don't know much about him well if ryback joined in 2012 i can kind of see why he's kind of one of a newer characters to wwe any more thoughts that's all I got. Kate, you got anything else on Ryback? Nope. All right, Jet, who's your number five? Digging out his list. My number five is Seth Rollins. Like I told Dad, it's Seth Rollins because I feel like he has done so much to get the title for Dean Ambrose to cash in. I think it was, like, amazing. Like, he, think about it. He's the only one to cash in at WrestleMania, and it was successful. He He cashed in. But there's one thing, his injury on his knee, like, I took a long time to recover. But suddenly when he returned, he was ready. Like, I'm surprised he beat Roman Reigns. Like, Roman Reigns was was still good after seven months. And he was, like, just, you know, been fighting and he's got better. I'm really surprised Seth Rollins was able to handle Roman Reigns. My opinion on Seth Rollins is... I really don't like his character. He's very cocky, and he's basically against all the fan favorites. Like, I, I, I see when people come out, they always have, like, posters that say, like, Seth Rollins sucks, or he's always against them. And he's against one of, like, Randy Orton. You know, he he was rivals with him. And, you know, Randy Orton won most of the time. And, um, you know, a lot of people like Randy Orton mostly because of internet fame, you know, with his RKO finisher, so... He's very cocky, too. 
uh, I all I know about Seth Rollins is what he was part of that group called the Shield, right, with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, and he was kind of the first one out of that group to break out and become a star. Um, I, I think yeah, I didn't watch wrestling at all, probably not a single episode when he was in his prime before he got hurt, but um, I know who he is because. He even though he played kind of a heel, he was a bad guy type character. A lot of people still liked him, and I think when he left and and then came back, that gave people time to miss his character being around. And even if they didn't like him because he was a heel before, they were happy to see him come back. Not only that, but a lot of people don't like Roman Reigns as the champion, which drives me crazy because I think he's cool. But uh, they were happy to see Seth Rollins come back because that meant probably you know Roman Reigns' reign could come to an end. Well. Speaking of the Shield, Dean Ambrose cashed in and became the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Worst thing of all time. And so, Dad um, hates Dean Ambrose more than Kate does. He, like... No way. Yes, he, it's his least favorite wrestler. And, like, I don't know why. Everybody loves him. My friend loves him. Like, why would you not like Dean Ambrose? Maybe you like Roman Reigns more but, like, why don't you like Dean Ambrose? I don't like Dean Ambrose because when you watch him wrestle, he looks really dumb. I mean, he just looks awkward and unathletic, and his moves look dumb, and I, he doesn't sell them well to me. And I know he goes crazy, and they call him the lunatic fringe, but when he does it, it's not like he's doing crazy things like, like Jeff Hardy or Mick like Foley. Mick Foley. He just looks silly to me when he does it. So here's the thing. That's not his fault. He's not as athletic as some of these other guys are, and I get that. But when I'm watching WWE, I'm watching it for the entertainment. These guys are doing things that I can't do, that 99% of people can't do with their bodies, and he doesn't. He can't do it either. So it just, to me, just gets on my nerves. And the fact that he won with a cash in and money in the bank, I mean, money in the bank, that was what Chris Jericho's idea. I think it's a, a cheap way to win. He didn't, he, I didn't see what happened, but you can just attack somebody right after they got out of another match and take their championship. It seems silly to me. Because he didn't earn it. So anyway, that's why I don't like him. He just looks really goofy to me. And I, you know, even the guys who have personality, a lot of the, what determines whether you like a character or not, or a superstar or not, is their personality. I don't have a problem with his. His is fine. It's just how goofy he looks when he's in the ring. Yeah. um, The Shield is my least favorite tag team of all time. I thought Roman Reigns is the best out of the group, and he's still okay to me. Like, he was... A new champion from the start, like, and for a while, he, not for a while, but for, like, a short amount of time, he started to go down, and he started, like, when Chris Jericho came back, and, like, other other superstars started to rise to fame, instead of, he kind of grew down a little, but then, he, but then you know, bursted, like, again, when he met up with, like, Dean Ambrose and stuff, but I don't know, I honestly really don't like them attacking the shield. Dean Ambrose, I... Yeah, me and my dad absolutely despise him because he, he he's not... All these guys can do crazy flips and, like, incredibly strong, you know, and have these amazing finishers, but his finisher is just like a DDT, which, you know, doesn't require any strength. It just requires the other guy to fall down, so... Also, well, the shield, I know what you're saying, you don't like him, but here's something silly and really good about the shield. The shield was unstoppable. They... They were. They had a streak. They they n- like never lost. And it's crazy. the The only match they lost was against CM Punk. But guess what? It was a handicap match. Out of all matches, they lost to one person. And to me, I found that really silly. If they could take on three people and they lose to one. Yeah, that's just the way WWE works. Sometimes you know it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But it it's good story and it's entertaining. Anything else on Seth Rollins? Cocky. He is the architect. That's it. Okay. My number four, you know, I tried to make my list a little different this time too, like I did last episode, and I had a harder time doing it. So I ended up just mostly picking my favorites. This guy might not have made my list if I was just picking up my straight up favorite five, but I wanted to include somebody from a tag team. And so I picked Jeff Hardy. I, I love the Hardy Boys. They, you know, I, I, when my sister used to watch, I would watch with her sometimes back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And the Hardy Boys were kind of at their prime then, and they were nuts. I mean, they just did crazy stuff in the ring that high flying off of everywhere, things that looked like they would do a lot of bodily damage, and they probably did, and and they just kept doing it anyways. He's he's got a cool character that looks cool, and, and he can do really cool things inside the ring. 
I think that the Hardy Boys weren't the most successful tag team as far as winning and championships and things like that, but they were always the most fun to watch. So I picked Jeff Hardy. Well, I, I do love Jeff Hardy. I do not like Matt Hardy. I used to like him, but when he betrayed Jeff Hardy, when he betrayed his own brother, I felt like that was wrong. And then, like, it, it started coming in a rivalry, and then so it was going to be like a one-on-one fight, and I don't feel like it's right, because Jeff Hardy then had other people to help him. But I also, something I, I, I don't realize what Jeff Hardy do, he, he still... He isn't in WWE. He joined TNA. I wonder why he quit it. I think I know why. Jeff Hardy, like, he he was pretty good, but, like, I felt like he didn't win enough matches. He, like, lost to Edge a lot of times. Hasn't beaten him as much. He, like, he hasn't been as successful as different superstars. When he did go solo for a bit, he beat Triple H for the Intercontinental Championship. I remember that. I watched it, and... Was it the roll up one? I don't know. I watched the roll up one. It, it it was awesome. Like Triple H went for a pedigree, rolled him up, has a cover, uh, as a pin, pretty good. Uh, I don't really have much thoughts on Jeff Hardy except he jumps a lot. So he does jump a lot. All right, well, let's move on then, Cade. What's your number four? My number four is Andre the Giant. I like Andre the Giant because well, he's a giant. He's like he's the tallest in WWE, but he wasn't the heaviest. You know, Yokozuna was obviously the heaviest at like seven hundred. Big Daddy V is actually the heaviest. He, oh, is. well, search him up. Wait, you how much does he weigh? Because Yokozuna weighs seven hundred fifty pounds. He weighs. He probably weighs more than Yokozuna. He's fatter, and like really fat. I saw him. I don't think so, but um, he's a giant. He can pick up things, and he didn't go fifteen years without losing. Yeah. Yeah. Then Hulk Hogan ended it. Body slammed him at WrestleMania, which was insane. Yeah, I, I almost put Andre on my list. He made my honorable mention list. It's like he had some disease that caused him to keep growing at a really fast rate when he was young, and he died at, at a pretty young age. He was discovered by somebody who thought, man, we could make this guy into a kind of a spectacle in in pro wrestling, but even before he was in WWF. And then they brought him in, and he never really won championships. They just bring him in and have him beat people in, in, in a lot of matches, almost kind of like The Undertaker, who you know, has been winning a lot of matches throughout his career but doesn't have a whole lot of championships to show for it. But, uh, yeah, he almost made my list. You know, If, if I'm going to put one or the other on the list between him and Hulk Hogan, you guys know who I'm going to choose. But good choice. Jay, you got anything to say about Andre? Well, to me, it's crazy, like – 2016, China dying is pretty sad. And, like, 2011, I think, Randy Savage died. And now Andre died in 1993. Like, I, a lot of people are passing away. It's Well, it, yeah, these guys, um, I mean, Chris Benoit, he went crazy and, and killed his family and then himself. And then uh, Eddie Guerrero died at a young age while he was still wrestling. These guys, uh, they do a lot to their bodies that, are, are detrimental. They get in a lot of injuries and it probably shortens their lives. A lot of them also use steroids and things like that that are not good for your health um, and kind of make you go crazy a little bit. Uh, Chris Benoit, the reason he went crazy, he had, um, there's a disease when you get too many concussions, fo- some football players get it too. And it kind of makes you go crazy. So these guys kind of put their bodies out there and they, they take substances that aren't good for them. And it leads to early deaths. A lot of the time It's kind of a sad thing. All right. Any more thoughts? Yeah, I got one more on Andre. He was also in one of my favorite 80s movies. He played um, um, kind of a giant character in uh, The Princess Bride. You guys have seen, but it's been a long time. You might not remember that. All right, let's move on. All right, Jet. What is your number four? My number four is Hulk Hogan. Probably the most iconic wrestler of all time. Like, to me, it is crazy. He body slammed Hulk Hogan, but to me, what's uh oh, uh, Andre. But, but what's crazy is like when he did it. If you watch it, he he walked around a little bit when he did it. He didn't just go like body slam him. Then he like did like three or four steps. It may sound short, but that's kind of crazy when you think about it. it's Andre the freaking giant. That's crazy. Uh, I've seen people pick up things that are like five hundred fifty pounds, like Andre, but um. 
I remember we were watching a Royal Rumble. And, you know, Big Show, he's 500 pounds, only 50 pounds away from Andre the Giant. Okay. And what's crazy is in the Royal Rumble, I forgot who it was. Was it Titus O'Neil? Oh, Cesaro. Yes. No, it was not Cesaro. It was, uh, I think it was Titus O'Neil. He was in the Royal Rumble. And he picked up Big Show and he held him. He held him in front of him and walked around the entire ring, like on the edge of the ring, and then chucked him, like a, like on half of the ring, which is insane. Cause he's not even like a popular person, even though he's an amazing athlete. You know, he's fast. He's also giant and strong. But I thought that was insane. You know, it's equivalent to you know Andre the Giant being picked up, which is pretty insane. Well, I was thinking of Cesaro in a battle royal where he picked up Big Show for like five or six seconds it that is amazing and the way he did it was huge it was like it's awesome and he showed great sportsmanship between big show and cesaro but cesaro he's betraying two of his tag team partners he had he's talking trash to Sami Zayn when they were getting along talking trash to dean ambrose when they're not well cesaro can never be hulk hogan getting, at all never. when they were getting along like cesaro is kind of meant to be for himself really but it's that's why it kind of surprised me when he handshaked big show well i I got some more to say about hulk hogan but i'm gonna wait until he comes up on my list but i like your choice i think he should be a little bit higher than number four yeah but let's move on let's move on okay i'll move on to my number three um i interpreted that with Randy Savage. Macho man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. This guy, I almost put him at my number one. I really did for this list. Because the more I think about it, he is probably the best personality the WWE slash WWF has ever seen. He was awesome. He never disappointed in talking to fans, talking to the crowd. Uh, In his interviews, on TV shows, he had commercials. Step into a Slim Jim. You ever heard of those? Yeah, I have. I've heard of Probably those. before your time, but he was everywhere, uh, and he was awesome. Um, he was really fun to watch. He had, in addition to that amazing personality, he also was really good inside the ring. I mean, he was he was rivals with Hulk Hogan. He was also partners with Hulk Hogan for a while. He was rivals with the Ultimate Warrior. He held the championship for an entire year before Hulk Hogan took it from him. So he had the in-ring success. He had the outside personality. He had a really cool look. Who else could have pulled off his look? I mean, he wore, like, bright pink and orange and these big boa scarves, and he had these weird sunglasses and, and the bandana, and it looked awesome. I don't know I don't know of anybody else who could have pulled it off, and it was because of his personality that made him so freaking cool. So when I came in WWE, when I got into it, I mean, but, like, he, he was one of the first ones to, like, have a finisher off of the top rope. When I first saw it, I thought it was pretty cool. And when I realized it was kind of... Macho Man Randy Savage, like d- that, made people do it a lot. It's pretty cool to me that he has the elbow drop as his finisher. I like it. Yeah, it is cool. It, I think it's it's tough to find a guy that is more original than him. Um, I wonder who had it first, the Kool Aid Man or Macho Man Randy Savage? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think Macho Man Randy Savage. In the World Wrestling Federation, here is a man that has not only turned it around 180 degrees, 180 degrees, but he's gone another 360 and then 360, and then another 180. In the Tower of Power, too sweet to be sour, I'm funky like a monkey. Sky's the limit and space is the place. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> My curiosity is killing me just like a cat would be killed. I had the curiosity, yeah. I'll give the devil his dues, yeah. Hulk Hogan has got the biggest arms in the world, yeah. But these arms aren't chopped liver. <laughs> Somebody likes chopped liver out there, that's great. You see what I'm talking about? He's just got so much personality. I could watch that, the whole movie, and, and, and not be bored. I was smiling and laughing the whole time. All right, any more thoughts? Yeah, that dude is truly one of a kind. I almost put him number one, but he's number three for now. I thought you would put him up at number two if he's almost number one. Yeah, my top three are really tough to choose from. All right, Kate, who do you got number three? My number three 
three has got to be Randy Orton. Randy Orton was my favorite for a long time. He's been in a while, but like other superstars have been in for a lot longer. And you know, he his internet fame has got him a lot of attention and um, his um, his style against Seth Rollins also helped a lot. You know, with him reversing and his amazing finisher, which is probably the most popular finisher of all time just because of the internet fame. And, you know, it's it's really unique and just fun to hit. Well, I like Randy Orton a lot, too, because he, hearing of the RKO is what got me into WWE. If you remember a long time ago when I heard of the RKO, but I haven't seen it, what it is, like what they do to do it. But then when you told me about it, it's really popular. Like, I wanted to check WWE out because, like, it's just cool to me. And that's what got me into it. Yeah, I I don't really know anything about him except that move, and that's because of the internet meme that went around where he was flying into videos and like during fail videos when somebody would fall, they would like Photoshop him jumping in and hitting the RKO on that person while he was falling, and that that's the only reason really why I know who Randy Orton is was because of that move. But it is a popular move. Um, I, do you remember Cade when um, there was a camp at Penn State? And a wrestling camp in Bo Nickel and a couple of the other Penn State wrestlers were doing the RKO to each other and other moves. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, so little things like that have made it made it kind of fun to know who he is. But I never watched him wrestle. I mean, I, that's during a time before Jet started watching, so I didn't know anything about him. Well, Randy Orton, I like him a lot. But when he first joined, he had a lot of hate because... That's when Triple H and Shawn Michaels weren't a tag team, and Triple H sort of became a bad guy. And I know I like Shawn Michaels more, but people cheered for Shawn Michaels more because Triple H was sort of the bad guy, the heel. But, like, when Randy Orton joined, when he joined Evolution, like, he got he got some hate. When he quit Evolution, like... People were going wild for him when he hit the RKO in midair, everything. Like, Randy Orton, had, if you returned right now, well, I bet you anything, you would have no hate. But Shawn, when Triple H joined Shawn Michaels as a tag team, I, I was, I, I'm pretty happy. Like, I think Triple H and Shawn Michaels are a good tag team together. They work good together. I gotta say, though, between Shawn Michaels and Triple H, Triple H, lo- Triple H looks much more dominant. Than Shawn Michaels. He's much more physically imposing. He's a bigger guy with he's jacked. But as a wrestler, I like Shawn Michaels a lot more. I think he's more entertaining and and he has a better re- presence inside the ring, in my opinion. Also, Shawn Michaels is a lot older than Triple H. He is. Any more thoughts? Uh, that's all I got on Randy Orton. Katie, anything else from you? Number three, Randy Orton. Nope. All right, Jet. Who do you got as your number? Three. My number three the is rock? The Rock. It's, it's actually the, the rock. rock. I'm serious. How do you know? It is actually The Rock. <laughs> the Rock may be the most iconic superstar. He is the most iconic superstar right now, but of all time, maybe he is. He is awesome. What The Rock... I knew The Rock more than Randy Orton. He's just not the reason why I got into WWE. Like, I just feel like he's so awesome. The way his moves are so creative, the people's elbow. Like, maybe some people don't think it's that cool, but, like, he's such an old wrestler. So, like, back then, it's kind of hard to create a finisher that everybody has. The Rock Bottom is really cool to me. It's way cooler than the people's level, in my personal opinion. What about the people's eyebrow? <laughs> I like that also, but it's just, he's awesome. Yeah, my opinions on The Rock is, you know, he's really awesome as a wrestler. He's really exciting to watch, you know. And him returning in WrestleMania, what was it? Last WrestleMania? WrestleMania 32. Yeah, in 32, when he grabbed that flamethrower and lit his name on fire, I thought that was pretty sick. You know, his uh, movie career also helped him, too. You know, he was the first WWE person I knew. Like, I knew him before anything else because um, way before Jet got into WWE, I got um, 
I was I used to watch movies and I was watching movies and stuff and it'd be like featuring The Rock or starring The Rock and I was like, is that his name? Because I, I thought that was his name for the longest amount of time until I saw another movie and showed him his real name instead of The Rock. And then I found out he was actually a WWE wrestler after that. I, you know, most people do it before, but I thought I, I knew it after. So. Yeah, okay. So speaking of that WrestleMania when he came back, my favorite part of that whole event and I watched the whole thing with you Jet was when Rock pinned that dude who was at Eric Rowan in six seconds. I'd never seen that in the WWE before. World record Yeah that's that's the world record. Like that uh, the world record at WrestleMania was eighteen seconds, but of all time, even at WrestleMania also, it, it's the Rock. He he beat like Eric Rowan was stupid to, to just do a normal strike. He knew it was coming immediately. Well, I like the Wyatt family. They're not on my list. Um, I think they have a really cool um, story, personality thing going. I like the music they play. But when they came out there, I couldn't wait for The Rock to slam them down. The Rock is my number two, so we'll just roll right into it here since we're going for your number three, Jet. Um, probably the best ever with a microphone in his hand. Standing out there. Talking to the crowd, talking to other wrestlers. Probably that's bull crap. He is the best on the okay, microphone. Okay, I'll give you that. He's the best with a microphone in his hand. He's funny. He's well-spoken. He has enough attitude to please the fans and to piss people off, but does it in a way that comes across as really charming. And he, he actually started his career as a heel. But his comments that he would make to people, the crowd just loved it so much that Vince McMahon was kind of forced to turn him into a face, into a good guy, because the crowd just loved him so much. Um, do you remember way back in the day, maybe when you like you were young, when he was before the Rock Rocky Mania, Rock, Rocky Mania, whatever it's called, he had so much hate, but when he became the Rock, people started to like him a lot more. Yeah, he's from a wrestling family. I know he changed his personality. A lot of them do that until they find something that fits well and sells well. But uh, like you said, Jet, he doesn't have many high-flying crazy moves, but he never ceases to entertain in the ring, and that's because of his personality and the way he sells it. Um, and In my opinion, others might disagree, he's the king of the Attitude Era. I know Stone Cold is kind of the one with the most attitude, and he's also another very popular wrestler, but if I'm going to pick one for my list, and that's what I did, from that era, I picked The Rock. He was much more entertaining to me, and I liked him a lot more. He does have the movie career going on, and he's very famous. Um, I pick him over Stone Cold and Triple H. Um, my number two has got to be, this one might be surprising to even Jet and Dad and the rest that might listen to this, but my second favorite is Mark Henry. Mark Henry is awesome to me. He's just the big guy. He's the world's strongest man. He's I think he's won some, like... Um, um, strength con- contest, you know, and different ones that, you know, who doesn't love a big guy, so. Well, to me, I don't really think that's a good choice. A- out of all the people, like Mark Henry, I don't feel like he's really a big superstar in WWE. He might be like a big guy. People might like him, but I feel like people don't really pay attention to him as the most. Like, he's a like superstar, but he's as like, as an the other superstars I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, he. I, I don't think he was a huge superstar either, but that doesn't mean he can't make our five to one list, right? It's it's just you can interpret the list however you like, and if you like him, put him on there. I'm I'm all for that. I think it's an interesting choice. He did win a strongman competition before coming to the WWE. He's a big dude. Um, I I didn't ever really watch him wrestle, but I watched him get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and they kind of talked about his career and showed him some of his highlights. And he did accomplish quite a bit, and they all said really nice things about him off of the mat, like how nice of a person he was. Yeah, Mark Henry is really nice in real life, but I don't, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Yeah, he, yeah, is. he is. We watched it. Yeah. He's retired? He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, he's... And, you know... You can only be in the Hall of Fame if you're retired. Then he must be retired. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. He's also a very mean-looking wrestler. You know, when he gets that smirk on his face, you know... Yeah, he's an intimidating guy, for sure. Oh, one of the coolest things I saw... I'm pretty sure it was Mark Henry. I think it was Mark Henry and the Big Show. And they they did some move off of, like, the second turnbuckle and fell onto the ring, and the whole thing collapsed. Was that Mark Henry? Do you know what I'm talking about? My Henry and Big Show. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. That yeah, was awesome. Yeah, when, when he did that suplex over the uh, superplex over the t- 
over the top rope, the whole ring just collapsed. Yeah. That Even cool. though it looked like they, they were staying there for three seconds and the guy's like, come on, and then the rain fell off. I thought it was a little bad timing, but it was still awesome. It was cool. Never saw it coming. Yeah. All right, Jet, who do you got for your number two? Randy Orton. I don't really have much to say about him. I've already talked about him, but he's just my number two. He's just awesome. Yeah, we already talked about him quite Very a bit. favorite. One of the fan favorites, too. All right. Uh, I am a real American. <laughs> fight for the rights of What crappy remix is this, Dad? I am a this is the original song. American. This is the original? Fight for what's right. So fun. Fight for your life. Yeah, I remember this part. But not the first part. When it comes crashing down. So you hear this song and instantly you know who I'm going to pick from our number one, as if you didn't already know. It's Hulk Hogan, the greatest of all time. You already talked about him a little bit though. So. We did, and I'll, I'll keep it short since we already talked about him. But he is the guy who was responsible for bringing the WWF into prominence. It wasn't a big deal before Hulk Hogan. He turned it into a, a really a, a pop culture phenomenon, and it wouldn't be what it is today without the Hulkster in it. Yeah. Hulk Hogan was the first one to like it. Here's my order of who got what made the WWE popular. First is Hulk Hogan. Second is Bret Hart. Third is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Fourth is Shawn Mike. Fourth is The Rock. Then fifth it is Shawn Michaels. Then sixth it is Randy Orton. And seventh, um, right now it's about Roman Reigns maybe. Yeah, he was the first in a long line. And, it, you know, they, there are wrestlers. Pro wrestling goes back a long way, before Hulk Hogan for sure. And there are names that stick out, like we all have heard of Bruno Sammartino because he was champion forever, and Bob Backlund was a really popular wrestler. But really, when you think of superstars, the very first one that comes to mind, as far as chronologically speaking, it's it, Hulk Hogan. I mean, he was the one who started the whole superstar thing. He was champion six times for a total of six years. Um which would be a record if it wasn't for the really old guys that don't matter to me or really anybody else. He body slammed Andre the Giant. We already talked about that. Dude, when he hulks out, it's that's like iconic. He didn't have these crazy moves either, and his finisher was a leg drop. I mean, how exciting is that? But he made it exciting because of the Hulk out. You could punch him. He could be bleeding all over the place. It didn't matter. It didn't stop him. He was gonna Once he started hulking out, you were done. It was just a matter of time. Hulk Hogan is kind of like Mick Foley. He, he's crazy to me when, like, when he fights, not his personality. But when he fights, like when he hulks out, he, he, he can hulk out when he's bloody. No matter how much blood he's on, as long as he's not dead, he can hulk out. And that's amazing. And, and the thing with Hulk, I think people don't realize how big and strong that dude really is. He He's like... At least six. He's somewhere between six five and six eight. He was listed at six eight during his career. I think he's actually closer to six five, six six. His biceps, twenty four inches. That's bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger at his peak, who was at twenty two inches. Now that might have been a gimmick that maybe he wasn't really twenty two inches, but or twenty four inches. But if he's in the neighborhood with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's a big dude. Big long arms, big and tall, three hundred pounds, strong dude, and and with an awesome personality. And and he was cool. Like this song. A real American. It was cool to be proud of America back then, and he was like the all-American wrestler that everybody rooted for. He told kids to drink their milk and say their prayers and eat their vitamins. That was his thing he would say to kids like who were WWF fans, and Andy was just an awesome champion. Okay, my number one, I have to go with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is absolutely insane, and I know people might not like him because, you know, he did beat on some popular guys, but... Like, he's just so strong, you know, he lost the UFC, I heard he's coming, he's coming back in UFC 200, you know, you can't go wrong with his finisher, suplexes, and he can hit him on Big Show, he can hit him on giant guys, and it'd be nothing to him, he hit three in a row on Big Show I saw, which I thought was insane, to suplex 500 pounds, and if you hear Brock Lesnar, he's so strong, like, have you seen his lats, they're like, they're, they're insane, you know, I, I was really cocky in real life, but like, if you hear... You know the saying, uh, if a tree falls in the forest, does it doesn't make a sound? If a, if a man's out in the forest, you know? But um, if you hear Brock Lesnar su- suplex a tree in the forest, are you going to hear a sound? Yes, that is Mother Nature saying, oh crap, this guy's like the strongest of all time. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's crazy. Maybe 
Brock Lesnar may, may maybe beat Hulk Hogan, and to me, I don't really think that's a good choice for WWE. They always do that. Somebody new usually beats somebody like old. Yeah, like Passing iconic. Torch, yeah. yeah, but I just feel like it's not a good idea. Like when Brock Lesnar beat The Rock, I'm like, what? How? He he. This is when he just joined and he's beat The Rock. And you think he has a bright future ahead of him, but like it's not worth yet beating The Rock that quickly. Same thing for Kurt Angle when he beat Kurt Angle also. See, you're naming all these people he beat, so that that means he's pretty good, right? So I I have mixed feelings about Brock Lesnar, and I didn't even think about him for my list. So I'm glad you brought him up. Kate and I have a preference towards wrestlers who were what we call real wrestlers, since you know that's what Kate does and Jet used to, and I help coach. Um, Brock Lesnar won a national championship at the University of Minnesota as as their heavyweight and went on to a, a UFC career. He tried the NFL for a little while, too. He's done a lot of cool things. He didn't make the Vikings team. He got cut. But he's done a lot of cool things. His out-of-the-ring, real-life personality, I can't stand it. I can't stand the guy. I rooted against him in UFC because I just couldn't stand his personality. His character, though, in the WWE, I think it's perfect. Because he doesn't say anything. He doesn't. He has a manager that does all of his talking for him. He just goes out there and beats the snot out of people. And even uh, we recently watched one. I can't remember what the event was, Jet, but it was a triple threat match with him. Fast lane. Yeah, fast lane with him and Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. And oh gosh. They, you know, they're superstars in their own right, especially Roman Reigns. And they had no shot at beating Brock Lesnar except the fact that they could team up on him somewhat and, and get him out of the way before they attacked each other. And my favorite part of that match, even though Brock Lesnar didn't win, was when he suplexed both Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose at the same time. It was, it was awesome. So I do, I really enjoy his in-ring personality, even though I don't like him outside of the ring. Yeah, uh, I remember when they were showing Dean Ambrose, you know, he's a big superstar now, you know, but he's not even as that at- as athletic as him, not even close. Like Dean, Dean Ambrose is slower than Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is just a beast of strength and can power through anything very quickly. He's a very quick person. You know, Brock Lesnar, I've seen him training in a gym, and it's insane. He can lift so much weight so many times very quickly. And, you know, there's certainly a video of Dean Ambrose. He was training in the desert. He was like, Doing like yoga in the desert, and he's like, Brock Lesnar may be training in a gym and with he a bunch of weights doing and stuff. Yoga, you liar. He was, he was, he had his feet on the wall and he was like doing like, doing like weird motions with his arms and stuff. And he's like, you know what? He might be training in a gym, getting out strong, but I am like focusing my Zen and I can power through him using Roman Reigns because that's all he had against him. Because imagine someone who ha- you can literally see his rolls when he takes off his shirt. As okay. Dean Ambrose fighting someone as giant, I just couldn't find it unfair that he beat actually Brock Lesnar. Like he didn't really beat him; he had Roman Reigns, of course, to carry him through the way, which is also well, Roman Reigns won that match. I know. Well, all Dean Ambrose was doing, he was just spreading his arms because it was so hot. Like it, like imagine if you were in the desert, you would do the exact same thing. Train in a gym. Yeah, you'll get so much stronger. Hold on. He, he, he doesn't. He does. He didn't think training the gym. He was on a freaking mountain. He might have got more exercise if he's running up a freaking mountain. Okay. Yeah. Well, what if Brock well, Lesnar? This is the Dean Ambrose episode, so let's move on. Yes. Do you have anything else to say about Brock Lesnar? Anybody? Beast. No. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. As, as you can see, Kade, de- Kade definitely knows it. So does Dad. Definitely knows it. My favorite is the HBK, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. He is one of the most iconic wrestlers. I think so also. He is awesome to be. I will always love Shawn Michaels. He is my favorite, and he always will be. And Randy will. And Randy is really close. But when I think about it, no, he's not close at all, actually, because it's Shawn Michaels to me, and he's awesome. Cade hates Shawn Michaels, but I, I don't care what he thinks. He's, he's, cocky. Off, he's, he's not cocky anymore. He's a legend. Everybody loves him. So just ignore Cade. He is awesome. Okay, well, I saw Brock Lesnar beat Shawn Michaels, so that, yeah. You're, oh, sure. Hulk Hogan, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, only Hulk Hogan, but not Brock Lesnar. And The Rock. No, The Rock and... Uh, no. And Bret Hart. The Rock and Shawn Michaels, that's a dream match that people want. Brock Lesnar and Shawn Michaels, that's also a dream match. That Yes, I've seen a video, top top five dream matches they 
that want in WWE, but they will never happen. Shawn Michaels and Brock Lesnar is one of them. Hulk Hogan has veto, but it's freaking Hulk Hogan. That was after uh, he caught Hulk Hogan with Sweet Chin Music twice, and Hulk Hogan still got up and beat him when he hulked out. Well, it's Hulk, I, I have to admit, that's pretty good. Hulk Hogan, I still like him a lot. Like, a lot of uh, Shawn Michaels' rivals, I like a lot also. My friend, for some reason, he does not like Triple H. I, because, like, he's a part of the authority, but, like, he says he only likes him a DX. But when he's part of the authority, that's what I like about him. He's kind of a bad guy like Seth Rollins I like. Yeah, he, he played both the heel and the face at different times in, in his career. He also wore a heart on his crotch throughout most of his career. And he had a ponytail, I saw. No, he's never had a ponytail. I saw him, he was going hunting, and he was wearing his hat, and on the back of his hat was a ponytail. I got no problem with the ponytail. I know. No big deal. The heart on the crotch is a little, a little funny to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> In the butt. You wear pants on your crotch, you guys are... Just not with hearts on them. Yeah. Please, just... <laughs> okay, okay, we're obviously picking on Jet here. You don't yeah. have to get mad. All right. So, I have more honorable mentions right, than let's, guys. let's hear your honorable mentions. All right. Can do I you, go? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Go um, I'll go, what, Triple H? That's my first one. I was thinking of him as my number one, but there's just... It was really... With my top five, it was really tight close you know none of them were like farther back than others they were all pretty close so i just chose them over triple h even though he was one of my favorites and my um my second one which is also my last one on my has got to be undertaker i was so close to putting him as my number first over brock lesnar but you know brock lesnar did end his streak after a long time of wrestlemania's and you know undertaker he's been in it for so long i think he's how long has it forever He's older than Shawn Michaels. So yeah, but Shawn Michaels has been in longer. Yeah. Shawn Michaels has joined in in 1984. Undertaker joined in in 1990. For a long time, 26 years. Yeah, I was I was actually surprised that nobody had Undertaker on their list. A couple other guys nobody had that are very famous wrestlers. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is you know one of the all time fan favorites. John Cena, nobody put him on their list. And uh, and Kane, who I think is awesome, but didn't make my list. Well, uh, speaking of Stone Cold and John Cena, they're not on my list. Stone Cold, what, I was thinking about him putting it on my list, but there's only five. He's he he was my number two, but I figured I like Randy Orton more than Stone Cold, and so Stone Cold didn't make my list. John Cena, uh, I'm not I'm not like most kids. John Cena is my favorite. He's actually my seventh favorite wrestler, so. But uh, Cena didn't. Uh, you know he's 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 just an okay guy. Like they favor him a lot when he like started. He fa- they favored him a lot. You know, c- you know. But he's a very lovable character. You know, I I like The Rock personally a lot better than him. Yeah, Cena is like the the all around good guy face character. A little bit like Hulk Hogan. A little bit like The Rock became in his career. He's very hardworking. He came back early from his injury so he could get back in there. And, and th- honestly, the WWE kind of needs him right now, along with Seth Rollins as a bad guy, to have some personalities that they're lacking. Go ahead, Jet. Well, actually, Seth Rollins is turning into a good guy. So well, is Roman. Both wh- of them are good guys. Whatever they are, they need those big personalities because there's kind of a lack of them right now. Uh, so I'm glad he's back. John Cena, from what I've heard, is one of the hardest working guys in and out of the ring. He's, he's very well respected by the other wrestlers. Um, and he's got a, a, a movie career outside of WWE also. It's not nearly as big as The Rock, so... Yeah. All right, I have a few honorable mentions also. I, I have a couple. Do you want me to do mine first, or do you want to go ahead? Um, I'll just go ahead and do Okay, mine. go ahead. All right, I got honorable mentions... Stone Cold, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle was in there just because he retired so early. He retired in 2006 when I was not even born yet. So, I had Kurt Angle as my number one honorable mention, and he would have made my top five if I hadn't put Jeff Hardy in there. I, I wanted to put – I like Kurt Angle more, but I wanted to put a tag team in there. Kurt Angle won a gold medal in 1996 in freestyle wrestling with a broken neck. That's all I got to say. CM Punk didn't make my list. I don't see him as a favorite of mine. Um, uh, hold on, let me see who else. Rey Mysterio didn't make my list, and this one, uh, I, it didn't make anybody's list. AJ Styles. My personal opinion, I do not like AJ Styles. He is rivals with John Cena. He, he picked a fight with John Cena. John Cena 
Oh, AJ Styles, season eight joined into 15 years of debuting. I do not know why that reason, but I just feel like he's a he he's turned he turned into a bad guy, and I just don't like AJ Styles. I have him on my honorable mention list. That's why I have the song here. I love his intro song. He's new to the WWE, and I'm only just kind of learning about him. But I think he's already one of my favorites, and that's current in WWE right now. He's got. A lot of interesting personality and storyline. He's is he he played the good guy when he first came in. He was respectful with Chris Jericho and shook hands after all their matches. He did the same thing with Roman Reigns. He couldn't hit him with a chair when he had the opportunity. And then he all of a sudden John Cena comes back and he beats the crap out of him. Who is this guy? I I, I think it's cool. I think he's he's um, probably a new face in the, that's going to be a big time superstar in the WWE. And he, his moves are are really awesome. The phenomenal forearm. He's high flying in the air when he does it. It's really cool, and uh, and his intro music is really cool. Uh, all right, the last honorable mention is John Cena, Brock Lesnar, and The Undertaker, and that's it. You got some more, Kate? Uh, Chris Jericho. I don't have I don't have much to say about him. He's he's pretty cool though. He's had a how he took a, didn't he take a little while break and now he's back for, for he's currently he's one of the oldest wrestlers that's currently wrestling a lot now, like. That has been in the longest. He returned in 2013. I know. Jen, I'm surprised you didn't say anything about this guy. Sami Zayn. He isn't my. He is. He isn't worth of my top five. Top five favorite, but it's my favorite intro of music. And I always love it. That sound is really cool to me. For some reason, I just love this entrance music. Favorite entrance music in the world. And Sami Zayn. He's my. He's not in NXT. He's kind of new to WWE, but in NXT, he's my favorite NXT superstar. Second is Finn Balor, and maybe three. I don't really know that much about NXT, but I just love Sami Zayn's entrance music, and he's kind of new around here. So, yeah. Okay. Well, any, anything else? Any final thoughts from you guys before we wrap this up? Not really. No. Remember to you know leave your no feedback. We might do uh, some suggestions. Well, I'm glad we chose uh, this topic for our second show. I think uh, we had some interesting choices and some debate. It's it's nice to not always agree on things, so we, we can have disagreements and talk about them, and it, it makes it interesting. Um, you know, the fact that Jets number one wears hearts on his crotch, you know, is is interesting. He does not wear it anymore. He's not cocky anymore. He can sweep chain music, Hulk Hogan, out of the WWE right now. <laughs> Hulk Hogan is just an old man walking that Shawn Michaels can get it like Shawn Michaels. He can wipe out people from the WWE and Hulk Hogan is one of them. I'm not saying crap about Hulk Hogan. I'm saying all right, he's good, all right, but Shawn all right. Michaels I was can just, beat him. I was just picking on you. But no big deal. Ever done that to Hulk Thank Hogan. you for taking the time to listen. You can check out our Facebook page um, that I'm about to set up. I think it'll be facebook.com slash uh, five, to, five one. to one podcast. So the fives and the one, the five and the one are numbers. So facebook.com slash five to one podcast. Leave us your opinions there. We'd love to hear your feedback on the wrestlers that you like, your favorite superstars, why you think we're idiots, why you think uh, my choices were the best and, and Cade's were the worst, whatever it is. Just let us know. We're, we welcome any feedback. Also, please take the time to give us a review on iTunes or whatever Android offers for podcasts. We welcome all feedback. We want your suggestions on how to make the show better and for future topics that we can discuss here on 5 to 1. All right, guys. Good job. Any final thoughts? No. All right. What are we going to do next time? What's our next show going to be? Top 5 Indiana Jones scenes. All Maybe. right. You heard it here from Jet. Our next episode. Please join us next time for our discussion on... Five to one episodes or five to one scenes from Indiana Jones. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Love you.